Sometimes, unbelievable NFL plays go viral on social media. Other times, plays go viral for their hilarity and their sheer stupidity. Ah, now he's ejected from the game. Oh my god! Hey, 30, no 10, touchdown! These are the 50 most viral moments in NFL history. Let's get things started with the catch that got more social media attention than any other in history. Some call it the greatest catch ever. When Odell Beckham Jr. was drafted out of LSU, everyone knew he had some real nice hands. But during a game against the Dallas Cowboys in his rookie year, he made quite possibly the greatest catch in NFL history. Falling back into the end zone, OBJ reached back and snagged the ball out of the air with one hand. Only God knows how the hell he made that catch. I don't think bodies are supposed to contort like that. Odell's talent got him a lot of attention, but so did his attitude. Be a play. And then a kick by Beckham. In 2015, fans were excited for the opportunity to watch two of the best players in the league go head to head. Odell Beckham Jr. and Josh Norman had a fierce rivalry, but instead of showcasing their talents, the two players showcased their pettiness. Seeing the back and forth between Josh Norman and Odell Beckham after the play. Both players went back and forth at each other, throwing cheap shots throughout the entire game. Things got blown out of control when Odell launched himself like a missile head first directly into Norman's helmet. And though the matchup was entertaining for fans, the league slapped both players with suspensions when the game was done. Oh, and that rivalry was just getting started. Once Norman signed with the Redskins, the intensity of their rivalry was stacked on top of the distaste that they already shared for one another. So when Odell's quarterback Eli Manning threw an interception in the red zone, OBJ was devastated. He started flipping out like a toddler up past his bedtime on the sideline, crying and kicking at the field goal net. If you thought things couldn't get worse for Odell, you are mistaken, my friends. The net collapsed on him and decided to kick Beckham's whiny little butt. And he had to get mocked for his behavior by the Redskins for the rest of the game. Talk about a rough day at the office. But when you are as talented as Odell, you don't sit around crying for too long. You know how they say time heals all wounds? Well, it turns out that just like time heals, touchdowns do too. A few weeks after his meltdown, Odell had a spectacular game against the Packers. The wideout caught for 222 receiving yards and two touchdowns. And to celebrate, he didn't only make amends with the kicking net, he proposed to her. Now, if that isn't romance, I don't know what is. And back to the net, which is the holy grail. Odell's antics sure put him in the spotlight, but he's far from the first wide receiver that caused drama. Love him or hate him, Terrell Owens was one of the most talented wide receivers to ever play. The problem was that despite his talent, he seemed like he couldn't get along with anyone. And when he was on the 49ers, he got in a heated feud with the Dallas Cowboys. After scoring a touchdown, he disrespectfully danced on the star in the middle of the field. Cowboys legend Emmett Smith reclaimed the star after scoring a touchdown of his own. When Owens tried to once again dance on the star after scoring his second touchdown of the game, George Teague took exception by tackling him mid-dance. Uh, there's going to be a penalty on George Teague because he's going to clock him. No doubt, wide receivers do a lot of talking, but corners can get involved in the drama as well. When feuds boil over, fights break out and fans love it. In a matchup of top corners versus top receivers, Andre Johnson matched up against Cortland Finnegan. And this one got messy. After Finnegan's helmet came off, Andre Johnson started throwing punches at him in a full out brawl. Johnson ended up winning the game ball for his performance on the field, but also proved that he could pursue a career in boxing when he's done with the NFL. And let's not forget the time Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Green clashed. A.J. Green was a dominant wide receiver, but Jalen Ramsey seemed to get the best of him during his second season in the league. With only one catch for six yards, A.J. Green lost his cool and got in a fight with Ramsey. Both players were ejected before halftime, and reports say that the altercation persisted after the ejection as Ramsey was out for blood looking for Green around yeah. the stadium. Oh, oh yeah. A.J. Green throwing a punches. punches. Another duo that couldn't stand each other were Aqib Talib and Michael Crabtree. Michael Crabtree seemed to find beef with plenty of corners, and his feud with Aqib Talib escalated over the span of two matchups. Talib ripped Crabtree's necklace off during an altercation, and the next time they played, he did it again. 
He claimed that Crabtree was the instigator, throwing punches at Tlaib and his teammates through the game. But eventually the game broke out into a full out brawl between the two teams. Oh, and a swing right well, there. This is crazy because now you're going to get ejected from the game. I mean, and Mike Evans wasn't too thrilled when he was matched up with a corner who took things a little too far. One of the most established unwritten rules of football is to protect your quarterback at all costs, and that is exactly what Mike Evans did in this next viral moment. Emotions flared as Tom Brady sprinted up the field arguing a play call with the referee. Lattimore wasn't exactly respecting the legendary quarterback when he pushed him aside dismissively. In Brady's top wideout, Mike Evans immediately took exception by throwing fists at the corner. You see Evans came off and he just rocked. Lattimore. And we have no clue what caused this next explosion. Javon Wims must have woken up on the wrong side of the bed on Sunday morning before playing the Chiefs. Or maybe his panties got knotted in a ball and were wedged up his butt. Either way, he was pissed off and no one knows why. The receiver went out and sucker punched his opponent CJ Gardner Johnson. And when Gardner Johnson didn't retaliate, Wims went again and hit him again. The play resulted in a penalty that forced the Bears into a long passing situation. Now, Wims. And on the very next play, Nick Foles threw an interception. Thanks a lot, Javon. Speaking of maniacs, we gotta mention the one and only Antonio Brown. AB seems to always be the center of attention. That was the case when he joined the Bucks and during his last game with the Bucks when he made a theatrical exit. Mid game, Brown took off his shoulder pads and ran off the field. While the Bucks tried to chalk it up as a mental health issue, Brown claims that he had a severely injured ankle that the Buccaneers coaching staff was trying to force him to play on. While his talents are undeniable, it seems like Antonio Brown gets the most attention on social media for his ridiculous antics. Antonio Brown might have forgotten the rules of football in this moment. He catches a punt and takes off. With just the punter to beat, he looks like he is going to score a touchdown. But at the last moment, he unleashes his inner ninja and decides to karate kick the Browns punter Spencer Lanning in the face with his cleat. Hot damn it! What are you thinking, AB? Years later, Miles Garrett tried to get some revenge for the Browns in a moment that spread on social media like wildfire. The NFL can get pretty violent, but fans were absolutely shocked when Miles Garrett lost his mind against the Pittsburgh Steelers. The beastly edge rusher took Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph's helmet off and then smashed him in the head with it. Rips the helmet off Rudolph's head. Garrett, of course, got suspended for his recklessness. And Rudolph, well, he's just lucky to still be alive. And Josh Norman is lucky to be alive after getting annihilated in his next moment. During a game between the Buffalo Bills and Tennessee Titans in 2020, Derrick Henry absolutely ragdolled Buffalo Bills cornerback Josh Norman during a run. Norman looked like a little high school kid getting thrown to the field. Twitter managed to capture every angle of Norman going flying while Titans head coach Mike Vrabel called it the greatest five yard run he's ever seen in his entire life. The NFL is the most entertaining league in the world, and that's why millions of people tune in to watch these viral moments, and we are here to make sure you don't miss any of them. So go smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more epic content like this. Cause we're sharing heated feuds, iconic plays, and epic interviews with you on the reg. Like this one here. Richard Sherman was known to be a pretty outspoken dude. And following a big time win against the 49ers in the NFC Championship, he did just that in an interview with Aaron Andrews. After breaking up a pass intended for Michael Crabtree to win the game, Sherman went on to call himself the best cornerback in the game and referred to Crabtree as a sorry wide receiver. Whether it was the raw emotions or just Richard Sherman's tone, the interview became one of the most viral moments in NFL history. Well, I'm the best corner in the game when you try me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree. Yeah, Richard Sherman's interview was pretty wild, but it didn't have us laughing like this next Seahawks legend. You gotta love beast mode. Marshawn Lynch had one of the best sense of humors of any player in NFL history. And he hated doing interviews with the media. But answering questions falls under the scope of work for an NFL player, and those who don't are liable to get fined by the NFL. Lynch decided to answer every question during media day before the Super Bowl by telling reporters, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined. And ironically, his interviews got more attention than the rest of the players combined.
The Seahawks truly were the team to watch. Unfortunately, their dynasty came crashing down in one epic moment. The Seattle Seahawks were only one yard away from winning their second consecutive Super Bowl. And they had the best power back in the NFL locked and loaded to punch the ball into the end zone to seal the victory. But head coach Pete Carroll made the unfortunate decision to attempt to pass it in from one yard out on first down. Russell Wilson attempted to catch his receiver quickly on a slant route just past the goal line. But Malcolm Butler, an undrafted rookie corner for the Patriots, made an incredible play to undercut the pass and intercept it. The play crushed the dreams of the Seahawks and earned the Patriots their fourth title in franchise history. You could blame Pete Carroll or Russell Wilson or whoever else you want for the Seahawks' failure. But the truth is, luck just seemed to be on the Patriots' side. Just check out this next moment that went viral. Super Bowl 51 was one of the craziest games in NFL history. The Patriots couldn't seem to get anything right in the first half, going down 28-3. But somehow in the second half of play, momentum completely shifted in their favor. And one play that stood out was Julian Edelman's ridiculous catch with 2.28 left in the fourth quarter. Edelman juggled the ball between three Falcons defenders and somehow came up with the catch without the ball hitting the ground. How? We have no idea, but the Patriots ended up winning their fifth Super Bowl of the Brady-Belichick era. Oh, that's a catch! But the Pats aren't the only team that gets to celebrate miracles in football. The divisional round playoff game between the Saints and Vikings had one of the most thrilling endings in NFL history. The Vikings, who blew a 17-point halftime lead, were down one point with time ticking down on the clock. On the last play of the game, Case Keenum launched a pass to Stefan Diggs, who caught the ball, slipped a tackle by Marcus Williams, and took the ball 61 yards to the house to win the game. The play earned the nickname the Minnesota Miracle, and is the only time in NFL history where a game has ended in a touchdown to take the lead on the very last play. 61 brilliant yards for Stefan Diggs. Up next is a moment where the Patriots were on the wrong side of a miracle. The Miami Miracle has got to be one of the craziest plays ever made. With time ticking down, the Dolphins had one last chance to get the ball into the end zone. And instead of attempting the Hail Mary, they opted for an old school backyard bonanza. Ryan Tannehill threw a pass to Kenny Stills, who slipped a lateral to Devontae Parker, who then tossed it over to Kenyon Drake, who took the ball all the way in for a game-winning score. What an ending. Didn't have the angle. Touchdown! Oh, Kenyon Drake! Up next, we look at another epic end to a rivalry game. In 2010, the Eagles were in the midst of an epic comeback against the New York Giants. The game was tied at 31 in overtime when Deshaun Jackson was ready to return a punt. Jackson, a lethal returner, first muffed the punt but was able to find some space after picking it up off the ground. With the help of some blockers, Jackson took off cutting his way through the Giants' special teams defenders. On his way to the end zone, he deviated from his direct route to do a bit of taunting before jogging the ball in for a game-winning score. It was the first game in NFL history that ended in a walk-off punt return touchdown. Still not in and now in for the touchdown, no flags. It must be exhausting losing to your division rivals over and over again. But there is no good excuse for this next viral moment. The Redskins were tired of losing to the rest of their division, so they went out and signed a massive defensive lineman named Albert Hainsworth to a seven-year, $100 million contract. So you could imagine how frustrated they were when he decided to take a mid-game nap on the field while the Eagles scored a touchdown. Jeez, I get that losing is exhausting, but that's just embarrassing. The Redskins were left with one of the worst cases of buyer's remorse in NFL history. But you're down on the ground, you have to get up. Hainsworth was too lazy to get his big fat butt down the field. He should be taking notes from Robert Hunt. In week 10 of 2021, Dolphins offensive lineman Robert Hunt may have scored the most entertaining touchdown that didn't count. With Tua Tagovailoa backpedaling, he tossed a pass to Hunt in the middle of the field. Though Hunt was ineligible to catch the ball, he did so anyway and then showed off some incredibly nifty footwork to defy physics and dance his way around Ravens defenders before acrobatically flipping his way into the end zone. <laughs> what a free! And then look at that. He's across the goal line. Speaking of players that are unlikely to rush for touchdowns, when you think of running quarterbacks, Peyton Manning is probably the last name that comes to mind. That's why fans went nuts when he ran the ball in for a touchdown at age 37 against the Dallas Cowboys. 
But in typical Manning fashion, he didn't use his speed to burn the Cowboys defenders. Instead, he deceived them with a magical play action fake. Well done, Peyton. Well done. Can you believe it? Peyton Manning runs it in for the touchdown. But Manning wasn't the only great quarterback who couldn't run for the life of him. During week three of the 2022 season, Tom Brady shocked the football world when he scrambled and took off for the first down on third and three. But after gaining enough for the first, the 45-year-old in his 20th NFL season kept rumbling forward. After gaining 20 yards on his knee brace, Brady swiftly slid leg first for the longest run of his entire career. The play was called off due to a holding call in the backfield, but that didn't stop millions of viewers from watching TB12, who is typically about as mobile as an oak tree, sprinting at his maximum speed. Too bad that play didn't count, because in the past, Brady hasn't been as fortunate as a runner. I don't know if the time zones were messing with Byron Leftwich's decision-making ability, but he made a very questionable play call during a game in Germany against the Seattle Seahawks. Up 14-3, Leftwich called a trick play that sent his 45-year-old quarterback, Tom Brady, running up the sidelines as a wide receiver. And you can guess how the play panned out. Brady flopped like a fish out of water before tripping the Seahawks defender that made an interception on the play. Talk about a sight to see. He is gonna throw it to Brady. Oh, Brady's but that wasn't even Brady's most viral blunder as a receiver. It's not often that Tom Brady is on the receiving end of a play, but that was the case during the 2018 Super Bowl against the Philadelphia Eagles. In the second quarter, with the score 9-3, the Patriots ran a trick play in an attempt to take the lead. The play call worked like a charm as Brady was wide open running down the sidelines. Danny Amendola tossed a floater right over his shoulder, which Brady was expected to take into the end zone for a touchdown. However, Brady had butterfingers and dropped the ball in a moment that was watched over and over again. Then to add salt to the wound, Nick Foles showed him up immediately after. When you think about gutsy play calls in the NFL, the Philly special has got to be one of the first plays that come to mind. Late in the second quarter of the 2018 Super Bowl, the Eagles faced a fourth and goal at the Patriots' one-yard line. Instead of kicking a field goal or even trying to punch one in, the Eagles decided to attempt a sneaky trick play. The Philly special resulted in the Eagles' tight end Trey Burton coming across the backfield and throwing a touchdown to quarterback Nick Foles. The play was the greatest highlight of the Eagles' Super Bowl victory. Foles was thrilled when his coach called a trick play. Other quarterbacks aren't as enthusiastic when they are asked to do things outside of their comfort zones. Some quarterbacks have pretty big egos, and Jay Cutler is definitely one of those quarterbacks. Cutler typically seemed pissed off during his playing career and was the first to blame one of his teammates after throwing an interception. When his coach called for him to line up as a wide receiver for a trick play in the Wildcat formation, Cutler wasn't too pleased. He stood there with his hands on his hips and didn't move after the snap was called. Cutler might as well have just laid on the ground like Hainsworth because it was pretty clear he wasn't going to be going anywhere near the ball on that play. What can we say? Not all quarterbacks love to run. But even the ones who do sometimes make fools of themselves. Daniel Jones has some underrated speed and he burned the Eagles' defense right up the middle of the field. Jones was clear of the defense and had nothing but green ahead of him, but fans were stunned when the quarterback lost his footing and stumbled over his own two feet. Jones turned the best play of his life to the most embarrassing play of his life in the blink of an eye. Even his own teammates couldn't help but laugh at his misfortune. Seems like every mistake a quarterback makes ends up all over the internet. It must not be an easy job, but Patrick Mahomes sure makes it look easy. In 2022 against the Denver Broncos, Patrick Mahomes once again astonished fans with a remarkable play. On third and two, he broke a tackle in the backfield and before stepping out of bounds, tossed a no-look pass over his head like a modern-day Magic Johnson. Jarek McKinnon caught Mahomes' little miracle throw and took it all the way to the house for a touchdown that fans just couldn't believe really happened. Mahomes, he'll just chuck it ahead. Mahomes' stardom has brought so much attention to the NFL, but his teammates love to bring out fans as well. There's nothing new about NFL stars dating celebrities, but when Travis Kelsey began dating Taylor Swift, the couple received unparalleled attention. And that's partially because Swift brought an entire entourage of A-list actors including Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds, and Hugh Jackman to the game with her. The group of C-Labs got almost as much screen time as the game itself. These C-Labs love getting attention, 
But when Ezekiel Elliott tried to playfully give attention to something more deserving, he got punished. Due to the protocols surrounding touchdown dances, you would think NFL stood for the no fun league. This was highlighted when Ezekiel Elliott scored a touchdown for the Cowboys and then jumped into a Salvation Army kettle sitting behind the end zone. Though the dance was in good nature and even brought attention to a charitable organization that partners with the NFL, Zeke still got fined. Kettle time! These guys cannot catch a break. Touchdown celebrations going viral are nothing new though. Mike Gesicki caught possibly the greatest touchdown of his life against the Baltimore Ravens, but somehow he managed to pull out such an abysmal celebration that he found himself getting shamed. It looks like he was attempting the gritty, but his version was all weird and whacked out. Next up, we go way back for possibly the most viral touchdown celebration in league history. Randy Moss was one of the most electrifying wide receivers to ever play the game. And in 2004, he scored a big time touchdown in the wildcard playoff game against the Packers in Lambeau Field. And Moss was far from shy with his celebration. He pretended to pull down his pants and wave his bat in kadonk at the Packers fans. The celebration are mixed reactions. While Joe Buck called the celebration disgusting, Chris Collinsworth famously praised him for shooting the moon. One thing is clear, the Vikings most definitely hate the Packers. Up next is a player who proved that the distaste hasn't been diluted over the years. Lambeau Stadium in Green Bay is one of the most iconic football stadiums in the country. For decades, Packers players have celebrated touchdowns by jumping into the stands in the back of the end zone to share the joy with the team's fans. The celebration is famously called the Lambeau Leap. So when a Packers rival, Stefan Diggs, scored a touchdown for the Vikings, he thought he would try his luck with a leap of his own. But Packers fans weren't having it for a second. They rejected the wideout and pushed him back on the field immediately. If you are wondering why the Vikings hate the Packers so much, it's because Green Bay has been the most dominant team in the division for decades. And a big reason for that has been because of Aaron Rodgers. The Green Bay Packers were trailing the Detroit Lions by 5 points in the final moments of the game. With just one untimed down remaining, quarterback Aaron Rodgers launched a 61-yard Hail Mary into the end zone. And somehow, tight end Richard Rodgers made a remarkable catch in the middle of a group of defenders, securing a game-winning touchdown. The play completed a 20 to nothing comeback, and the Packers came out victorious. In the end zone, it is caught for the win! But that was far from the only amazing play of Aaron Rodgers that went viral. In 2016, the Green Bay Packers faced the Arizona Cardinals in a crazy playoff game. Trailing by a touchdown with under a minute left, the Packers were on their own 4-yard line facing a daunting 4th and 20 situation. A crazy 60-yard pass completion extended their hope, but they were still in need of another miracle in order to advance. With just 5 seconds remaining and 41 yards to go after an offensive penalty, quarterback Aaron Rodgers had one last chance to win the game. He evaded a bunch of Blazers and scrambled all over the backfield. While on the run, he launched a desperate bomb into the end zone. And Jeff Yanis, an unlikely hero, timed a perfect leap and caught the ball for a dramatic touchdown. Fans couldn't believe it, but the Packers still ended up losing the game in overtime despite the massive play. Playing in the division of an all-time great quarterback has got to be frustrating. Imagine getting stomped year after year for over a decade. That's exactly what the Bears went through, coming up short time and time again trying to stop Rodgers. And after running the ball in for a touchdown in 2021, Rodgers wanted to remind them who reigned supreme NFC North division. He loudly proclaimed, I still own you to the Bears fans. Packers fans loved it, Bears fans hated it, but everyone on the internet tuned in to see it. Uh, let the fans know I'm still here. Rodgers was feared by the league as a Packer. But up next is the greatest Panthers quarterback in the team's history. Cam Newton was once a superstar for the Carolina Panthers, but as time passed, so did his stardom. The quarterback left the Panthers and signed with the Patriots, but after losing a starting gig with the Pats, Newton got a second opportunity to suit up for the Panthers. And after running in a touchdown, he pulled off his helmet and emphatically declared, I'm back! Fans thought the celebration was hilarious as Newton got memed all over the internet. Newton made noise when he came back, but this next player was raising eyebrows before he even started. 
Quinnen Williams was a highly touted prospect coming into the draft. But after getting drafted by the Jets, he might have been a little nervous during his interview. Or who knows? Maybe he views himself in the third person like some kind of lunatic, because he sneezed in his interview and said bless you, then said thank you to himself. The interview went viral and left people wondering, what is up with this guy? That interview may have been a little weird, but this play call coming up next was one of the weirdest of all time. Just when you thought you'd seen it all, the Chiefs came out and did something never seen before. In their pre-play huddle, they operated a full team ring around the rosy before taking their places on the line, and then followed it up with a sweet play to Kadarius Toney that went for a touchdown. Unfortunately, the touchdown was called back due to an offensive holding call, but that didn't stop the moment from going viral. Look at this. Coaches love getting creative with their play calls, but up next is one of the most epic coaching calls in NFL history. It takes a lot of talent and the willingness to take some chances in order to win a Super Bowl. And head coach Sean Payton proved that he had some big time kahunas when he took the biggest chance of his coaching career coming out of halftime during the Super Bowl against the Colts. The Saints down 10-6 successfully operated an onside kick to start the second half. The thought process was that taking a chance to steal a possession from Peyton Manning's offense was worth risking giving up a good field position to start the drive. In theory, it makes sense. And fortunately, the play worked out and the Saints ended up winning the Super Bowl. Talk about a thrill. With so much pressure on coaches to win games, it's not surprising that some of them have crazy tempers. Losing is never fun, especially when you are favored to win. And Bill's offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey made that clear after his team was upset by the Miami Dolphins. He absolutely trashed his team's coaching booth out of frustration. Dude, take a chill pill. And the offensive coordinator Dorsey. And this coach was so invested that he tried to take matters into his own hands. We know the feeling of wishing we could make a difference on the field. That is why we scream at our televisions while watching our favorite teams blow big time plays. But Jets conditioning coach Sal Alosi took things a little too far in a game against the Dolphins. After a punt, Alosi stuck out his leg and tripped a Dolphins coverage player named Nolan Carroll. Carroll didn't know what the hell just hit him and fell to the ground in pain. I guess Alosi just couldn't resist when he had the opportunity to make a difference on the field, but his impulsions got him suspended by his team without pay for the remainder of the season. What a bonehead. It's one thing for a coach to make a difference in the outcome, but when refs blow calls, players go nuts. And when players go crazy, fans tune in. No one likes to see a ref take over a close football game, especially Marcus Peters. He thought that he came up with a big time defensive stop in the end zone, but the ref called him for pass interference. Peters wasn't thrilled with the call, so he took the flag and tossed it into the stands to a lucky fan who got to go home with a very special souvenir. It's one thing when a ref makes a bad call, but what happens when they don't? Turns out not making calls will earn them enemies as well. In this viral moment, Travis Kelsey felt he was abused in the end zone by the Jaguars, but the refs were reluctant to throw any flags on the field. After pleading his case, the tight end realized he wasn't about to get a call in his favor, so he tossed his sweaty towel at the ref's face. Ew, that is gross and disrespectful. Kelsey didn't just get ejected, he also got fined close to $25,000 for his reaction. After the game, Kelsey told a reporter he felt like an idiot right after his decision. Yeah, bud, we agree. Kelsey wasn't the only legendary tight end that went viral for reacting to a no-call. Rob Gronkowski was ripped and pulled all the way down the field by cornerback Tredavious White. So when the corner caught an interception, Gronk was searching all over the field for white flags. And when he didn't see any, he decided to take matters into his own hands. Gronk threw a vicious body slam leading with his shoulder into White's back after the play. The tight end looks like he's training for a post-NFL career in the WWE. Wouldn't that be fun to watch? And here is a player that lost his cool when his team was getting their butts kicked by a rival. The Rams were getting their butts kicked by the 49ers, and Aaron Donald was clearly fed up. So he ripped the helmet off of one of his opponents and immediately got ejected for his actions. In retaliation to getting ejected, the defensive lineman threw his helmet in rage. Now that is one guy I wouldn't want to mess with. What is he doing? Are you taken by the neck? Speaking of helmets, 
The New England Patriots were entering the Super Bowl seeking immortality. They had a perfect 16-0 record during the regular season and were only one win away from absolute perfection. In the fourth quarter on third and long, Eli Manning somehow evaded Patriots defenders in the backfield before blindly launching a missile into the middle of the field. And in miraculous fashion, an unlikely hero, David Tyree, leaped up and caught the ball, gripping it with one hand and his helmet. Hall of Famer Rodney Harrison battled Tyree for the ball, but for the life of him, couldn't punch it loose. The catch led to a game-winning touchdown for Plaxico Burris as the New York Giants stole the Super Bowl from Brady and the Pats. The play has been watched over and over again for over a decade on social media platforms. This ball is thrown and Tyree just goes up for it like a basketball player. There you have it, folks. Those were the most viral plays in NFL history. We sure hope you liked this epic video. If you did, let us know by giving us a big old thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up with all our NFL videos. Also, if you want to keep on watching, click on one of the video links currently on your screen.